Welcome back to In The Know. Today we are talking about fitness misconceptions and our guest expert is Igor Klebanov. And we talked about self-assessments, we talked yep. about diets, and I've gone out on the record and I've told many people that I weigh myself every day. I step mm. on the scale every day. Yes. And you're here to tell me and tell everyone at home to throw away our scales. Yes. Why? Well, let me ask you. When you get on the scale and it changes day to day, do you ever do it twice a day? For sure. Okay. <laughs> Do you see two different numbers? Sometimes. Does it drive you crazy? No, I, you know, I, I can see how it would drive some people crazy, but yeah. it doesn't really drive me crazy. Okay, that's, you're unique, that's great. Uh, most women who will weigh themselves every day, it'll drive them crazy just because of natural fluctuations in weight. It says nothing about your fast status and says nothing about your muscle status. Uh, more than anything, daily fluctuations are due to water, water right. content, that's all. Um, funny little story, I had a client who was a very petite lady. Um, she only weighed about 110 pounds. The day after a tough workout, she weighed 119 pounds. In one day, she gained nine pounds. You think that's fat? Not a chance. No. You think it's muscle? Not a chance either. It's just water. She's just storing water. Um, and yet it freaks her out that she gained nine pounds literally overnight. So one, don't use the scale. And here's why. All it tells you is weight, okay? People don't really care about how much they weigh. They think they do. They don't really. Uh, all weight is, it consists of muscle, it consists of fat, it consists of blood, bone, etc. Um, really what people are concerned with is fat. The only people who are truly concerned with weight, no matter what it consists of, is athletes who are governed by a weight class. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, they don't care what they lose, the muscle, fat, water, whatever, as long as they get down below a certain weight, they're, they're happy. Everyone else, they just care about fat. Okay, and how do you measure your fat? So here's how you measure your fat. You see this little uh, piece of equipment? Mm -hmm. This is called a body fat caliper. Okay. What it does is it opens up like so. Mm -hmm. And you can see the dial here. This is uh, the millimeters, okay? So you pinch various different pieces of skin, uh, areas around the body, and it tells you, uh, not, it doesn't tell you the percentage of fat you have, but it tells you specifically the amount of millimeters in fat that you have in that particular area. Um, and when you put the different areas of the body together, it gives you a much more comprehensive look, a much more detailed look about where you store your fat. And here's the interesting thing. Where you store your fat has very interesting implications about people's hormonal status. Right. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. So this by itself is already better than the body, than, sorry, not the body fat scale, but the regular bathroom scale. Okay. Now, even that doesn't tell you the full picture. You have to use this in combination with very simple circumferences. You just take a measuring tape, get it at a dollar store, mm -hmm. and measure. Why do we combine the two? Well, here's why. Provided that you're weight training, you want to be doing this in combination with, uh, with, uh, with the circumferences. So let's say you pin uh, I pinch a client's tricep. Mm -hmm. We find there is 25 millimeters of, of fat in there. Mm -hmm. Now, next week, we find that, uh, that there's not 25, there is 20 millimeters. We know that fat has decreased, but do we know anything about their muscle? Right. Well, no, we haven't measured. If we use the, uh, the circumference, let's say one week their, uh, their circumference is 25 centimeters. The next week it's still 25 centimeters, but the calipers went down. That means you gain muscle and lost fat at the same time. This gives you a much more precise picture of exactly how your training and diet are working in combination with each other. Right. So and how is this different from BMI or body mass index? Okay. Body mass index, uh, for people who don't know, body ma mass index is your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. Oh, okay. Body mass index tells you nothing about your body fat percentage. It stratifies you into categories, um, and here's why that's not necessarily good. A guy like Arnold Schwarzenegger, big muscular guy. According to BMI, he is overweight. Right. And yet, he doesn't have too much body fat, or at least he didn't have too much body fat, right? Okay. Um, now, that's really only 1% of the population. Uh, for the other... Uh, 99% mm -hmm. would it work? Well, still no. Here's the biggest risk of BMI, body mass index. It does not catch the people who are at their ideal weight but have way too much body fat. Case in point, I had a client who was uh, five foot nine and 148 pounds. Perfectly normal, you look at her, but you measure her body fat, it's actually 40%. Wow. So her muscle has gone down so much and her fat has gone down so much that her total weight well, it hasn't really changed too much, but it hasn't captured what's really going on inside her body. Right, so that 148 pounds is more fat than muscle, and you want more muscle than fat. Exactly. So that's, that's why it's very, very important to forget about BMI. Uh, it doesn't mean too much. Uh, stick with the body fat scale as, uh, if, for the very, very uh, hands-off approach, or if you want a hands-on approach, use the skinfold calipers in combination with her conferences. Okay, so that's we've a good got a call. Go. We've got Jane Great. from Aurora on the line. Hi, Jane. 
Hi. Do you have a question for Igor? Um, yeah, actually I do. Um, you know what? I'm not concerned much about my weight. Um, because it seems like it's not falling down, but it's growing. So I'm concerned more about losing fat and gaining muscles. But how do I find out about how much fat do I have on my body? Um, I've heard about the fat scales in the genes. Are they any good? Here's something very interesting. Those fat scales, so it's not just the regular bathroom scale, it's just scale that you, that you step on. Um, there is actually electrodes on the bottom, and based on how quickly the electricity gets through your body, it tells you how much fat you have. Uh, the theory behind that is that electricity travels slower through fat than through muscle. Um, true assumption, but it's not necessarily the most accurate thing because it's very, very um, governed by, weight fl by water fluctuations. So if you actually step on the scale, um, drink a full glass of water, a full bottle of water, 500 milliliters, step on the scale again about half an hour later, it's going to be completely different. Um, now, provided that you measure yourself at the same time every day, um, you're going to get a fairly accurate picture of, sorry, not every day, uh, every, every time you weigh yourself, you're going to get a fairly accurate picture of your body fat percentage. But again, it doesn't tell you where your body fat is stored. Furthermore, because electricity takes the shortest distance to, to get around, it's just going to go up one leg and down the other. So it only measures lower body fat. It takes, does not take the upper body fat into account. Here's why that might be a problem for women in particular who store their fat in the lower body. Um, it's going to give you a disproportionate view of exactly how much body fat you have. Same thing with those body fat um, tools that, you, that are handheld. They're only telling you upper body fat. They say nothing about belly fat or lower body fat. So that's why it may be a problem. That's why I particularly like to use with my clients the skin fold calipers in combination with circumferences. In my mind, next to a $70,000 DEXA scan, which is restricted for research and laboratory settings anyway, this very low-tech approach is probably the most accurate way to measure body fat. And I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, a seminar on that on June 11th at the Toronto Raw Vegan Festival. Um, so th I'm going to be giving a workshop on exactly how to measure your body fat using these methods. Okay. Thanks for your call. Don't go anywhere more in the know when we come back after this short break.